This is a ball from a motor bearing. The damage you can see on it is caused by current flowing over the ball. This is what an undamaged ball looks like. How this happens and what you can do about it, you will learn in this video. Motor bearings that look like this after a short period of operation are not at all uncommon. The so-called bearing currents that flow through these bearings leave their traces, which in turn sooner or later destroy the bearing. The consequences of destroyed motor bearings are obvious. Outage periods, production downtimes and repair costs can cause considerable costs. Good example of this can be found in wind power, groundwater extraction and in industry where motor bearings can be extremely difficult to reach. To understand where these bearing currents come from, we need to look over the entire drive unit. Schematically illustrated, we have a motor, a motor cable, a drive controller, that is a frequency inverter, and a power supply unit, usually with 400 volts alternating voltage. Our problem already begins in the frequency inverter. There, our three-phase 400 volts alternating voltage is first of all converted into a direct voltage. This DC voltage is then switched via so-called IGBTs with a defined polarity and duration to the three output terminals of the frequency inverter. This serves to ensure that the motor can be changed in its speed via the switching frequency of the IGBTs. After that, our L1 voltage no longer looks sinusoidal, but rectangular with different switching frequency and duration. The voltages of the other two phases look similar, but they are connected in such a way that a phase shift or a rotating field is created, which allows our motor to rotate again in the end. The output frequency at the frequency inverter is, due to the frequency of the IGBTs, no longer at 50 Hz, but usually in the range of 2 to 16 kHz. As we know, the sum of all voltages in a sinusoidal three-phase network is zero volts at any time. Let us now consider the sum of the output voltages at the frequency inverter. It turns out that this sum is no longer zero volts, however a kind of square wave voltage remains. This square wave voltage has, like all other mains voltages, earth as its reference potential. After all, it is only a product of our mains phases. As this voltage can no longer be referred to a defined source, however it is the result of the pulse width modulation in the frequency inverter, it is referred to as a common mode voltage. In our diagram, we represent this common mode voltage as a little current devil. Our little current devil has earth as its reference potential and would like to flow down to it. Unfortunately, it can't easily do so as all the components, such as the motor cable, are properly insulated. The motor cable transports it to the motor. All the way to the motor and also in the motor, various capacitances act on it, which can change its frequency and height. For better illustration, let's just say that on the way to the motor, our little devil gets angrier and angrier because he can't get out of his isolation prison. Once inside the motor, it tries to find a way to Earth. But even in the motor, there is no galvanic connection to earth through which it could simply flow away. The housing of the motor is usually earthed. This means that if it somehow managed to get through the motor housing, it has found its way to earth. In search for weak points of the insulation, it arrives at the motor bearing. As soon as it has found a weak spot, it breaks through all of the surfaces and the insulating lubricant in the bearing and leaves damage along the way as we saw at the beginning. During operation, our little devil is not alone. Permanently, these little guys are available in the motor in different sizes and in varying degrees of anger and try to break through. The tiny ones are usually not so dangerous. They lack the strength to achieve a breakthrough. The really dangerous ones are the big ones. There are various approaches to this problem. You could try to give the common mode currents a low impedance path to earth, so they don't have to punch through the bearings. Or you could use other materials to increase the insulation of the bearings in order to make it more difficult to punch through. These ideas are not wrong in principle. They protect the bearing by diverting the currents to earth via a different route or avoid a breakthrough. 
Ultimately, however, they combat rather an effect of the common mode voltage, namely the resulting current. The new output filter series AFBCR starts a little further upstream. Mounted directly behind the frequency inverter output, the common mode voltages are trapped in the filter where they transform their energy into heat. For our little devil, this means that it is trapped in the filter and gets so angry that it burns itself. Let's look at a practical example. We measured the differential current that arises from the common mode voltage with our differential current diagnostic system, DIFTI for short, on a motor and recorded it. The first measurement was taken during normal operation without filter. The diagram clearly shows the large peaks of the currents. These are our big devils that break through again and again. Before the second measurement, an AFBCR filter was installed directly behind the frequency inverter. Afterwards, measurements were taken again. At first glance you can see clearly that the overall signal image is already significantly lower than before. The high deflections, means the big devils, are no longer present and the medium ones became very rare. This of course considerably reduces the risk of a breakthrough in the bearing because there is no longer any tensions that have enough force to blow through. The AF-BCR filters combat the disturbances directly at the source, or at least just behind it, and not only at the motor. The design and the installation of the BCR filters are extremely simple. The completely encapsulated plastic housing is screwed onto the mounting plate and the three wires of the frequency inverter output are simply fed through the absorption tunnel of the filter without any screw connections. That's all! For special applications with low rated currents, models with terminals are also available. Should we have awakened your interest with our DIFTI measuring system, I can already tell you that there will also be a video soon which will introduce the new measuring system in more detail. If you don't want to wait that long, you can get all the information you need in advance on our website, by email or on the phone. We hope that we have not left any questions about the BCR filters unanswered. If we did, the same applies as for the DIFTI. Please visit our website www.ipa.de or contact us personally. We will gladly advise you.